In the um, digital world, uh, you can literally r record a one hertz signal, and that's not helpful. So in your original tracks, say for instance, um, you have a, uh, a uh, flute track. Well, if you look at the fundamentals and the lowest note that a flute can play, you're going to realize that um, any information down at 50 hertz is going to be destructive. If your room had a sub uh, rumble in it when you were recording that particular instrument, um, you're going to need to get rid of it. Because what's going to happen is that those low frequencies that are f literally flowing through your mix are modulating your mix. And uh, it's going to interfere with your ability to blend uh, certain sources. It's always a good rule of thumb. And this would uh, regard any pitched instrument, is to look at the lowest note that was sung or played by that given instrument. Look at the chart, find out where that frequency is, go an octave below that, and put in a high pass filter at at least 24 dB per octave. That way you're not gonna infringe on the fundamental, but you're gonna get rid of sub frequencies that are not helpful in the mix process. Now, when it gets down to non pitched instruments, say percussion and so forth, you have to use a little common sense here. If you've got a bell tree or a uh, triangle, you know that in a triangle, there's not gonna necessarily be any frequencies down around 100 hertz that are gonna be useful, or even, well, honestly, much above that. So why not go ahead and put in a high pass filter and filter out anything that might be modulating your mix uh, destructively. It goes back to realizing that your original recordings have data in them that are useless, that need to be eliminated before you start trying to blend things together. So the use of high-pass high filters on your original elements, I am a, a big proponent of. I can't tell you the number of times that I have to end up um, getting rid of P-pops on vocal tracks. It's always important to try to high-pass your vocal tracks. You gotta be very careful about that, but it's always important to do that because you're gonna have low frequencies down there that are, again, destructive in your mix process. Uh, now, some P-pops are, if you put a high pass on them, you, you're gonna, you can't address those. Uh, you gotta really rely on me to fix them. I've got the tools to fix P-pops just w within seconds. If you can fix them prior to, great, but I would encourage you to think about using high pass filters at a medicinal level before you start mixing.